Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel again. We have Paige here with The Legal Page and we are going to be chatting about how websites uh, need to be legal. So Paige, just start us off, give us a brief intro, who you are, when you got started, that sort of thing. Yeah, hey everyone, my name is Paige. I'm the owner and lead attorney behind The Legal Page. We're a legal education platform online. We have a YouTube channel as well if you want to check it out. We also have blogs and podcasts. We have a Facebook community where we answer small business owners, legal questions, and then we have a contract shop as well. So really the full gamut of anything you would need as an entrepreneur, solopreneur, small business owner, we are here to help you. Yeah, I'm going to link a lot of the things below, but um, highly suggest that for your Facebook group as well. There's a lot of people in it asking a lot of really great questions. So uh, we're just going to dive in. And my first question for you, Paige, is... As a website designer, um, a lot of people leave, I notice, leave off any type of terms and condition, privacy policy. And do you really need both of those things on your website? Yes, absolutely, you need both. Legally speaking, you absolutely need a privacy policy, especially if you're running any type of Facebook ads or Google Analytics, it is required by law. But a terms and conditions isn't necessarily a legal requirement by law. There's no law that says you have to have TNCs at the bottom footer of your website. But legally speaking, it's best practice. Yeah, awesome. Can you explain the difference between the privacy policy and the terms and conditions? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, terms and conditions benefit you as the business owner and the website. So it's all about protecting your assets on your website. And a privacy policy is all about the user's assets and the user's personal information. So that's why it's important in the bottom footer of your website to have the two linked separately. Because if someone is wondering what they can do with their personal information or how you're using it or how they can unsubscribe, they would click on the privacy policy. If it's anything related to copyright on your website, you know, users doing X, Y, Z on your website, any type of like liability limitations, that's gonna be in the terms and conditions. Perfect, okay, great. So what should a privacy policy include? Yeah, so a privacy policy, like I said, that is the most important. If you're going to get one or the other, get the privacy policy. Luckily, at the legal page, we sell them in a bundle because I believe you need to have both. So a privacy policy, it has a lot more legal mumbo jumbo or legal language than I would say any other document that you would probably have as a small business owner. So just be aware of that when you open it, you're going to be like alarmed at how much legal information there is in there. But what's really important here is you're explaining to a user what information you're collecting from them when they land on their website. Usually it's linked to IP addresses, right? Google Analytics, things along those lines. Also, if they're inputting their personal information in some way, like through a pop-up or entering to join your newsletter list, it's usually first, last name, and email address or whatever you have listed there. How you're using that personal information, so you need to explain that in your privacy policy. And then why or when you would disclose their personal information to third parties, or if you don't disclose to third parties, you would put that in your privacy policy. And then finally, the most important part of a privacy policy is how users can get their information back from you. So how can they unsubscribe? Or if you're collecting like credit card information or things along those lines, how they can strip that from your backend information. Okay. So what if you don't have... Um you know, an email list, you're not selling anything and you don't plan on connecting your Google Analytics. Do you really need it? I mean, honestly, I would say you're probably tracking it in some way. There's some type of backend of a website host that is likely tracking users to your website. I would hope that most people listening to this, if they're business owners, are using Google Analytics. So for like the maybe 0.01% of you that aren't, then I would say maybe not, but it's always best practice to have it. It's really a copy and paste document that you put at the bottom footer of your website. So I would suggest you have it, but most of you are utilizing information collected from users landing on your website in some way, shape or form. So just get a privacy policy. Yeah, I'm going to link below um, how to connect the Google Analytics to your website so you guys can figure that out because Paige is right, you probably should be doing that. Yeah, um, even if, Rebecca, I did just want to say here, if you're like boosting ads in some respect, like they can track all of those things if you're using Facebook pixels and things along those lines. So sometimes people don't put the two and two together that you really just need a privacy policy because you're acquiring information from wherever users are coming from to your website. 
Okay, so terms and conditions, what do you need? Yeah, terms and conditions are going to be very different at the beginning portion of your terms and conditions across the board because it's really dependent on the business that you have. If you are selling intangible like digital products or tangible products that you're shipping and selling, all of that type of information is going to be included at the top portion of your terms and conditions. So think refundability, exchange policy, and shipping policy if it applies to you. Then you're going to want to have, of course, everyone across the board needs to have anything related to intellectual property of what is on your website. So any imagery, copyright, and any text copyright ownership. All of that should be owned by your company, and you should explain that. People can use it with, for their own benefit. And then, uh, of course, if you're doing any type of like advertising or earnings disclaimers need to be in there, right? If you're affiliating for any type of products and your blog, so on and so forth, limits of liability and general provisions are going to be very common across the board in terms and conditions at the bottom portion of your terms and conditions. And then the last thing I wanted to say here is a disclaimer. So if you are a lawyer, a professional, you have a degree, if you're a medical professional, well, you need some type of disclaimer on your website, right? That there's no kind of attorney-client privilege that attaches or you're not their actual doctor because they haven't hired you. If you're an online coach, this is also really good to put in there, right? You're not their therapist, you're not their lawyer, and they need to hire the correct like professional in those sec sectors. Um, and that needs to be in your terms and conditions as well. So I think I went through everything for the most part that needs to be in your terms and conditions. But again, it's, it's just pretty specific to Business and honestly, how you feel about users landing on your website and what are your business policies surrounding your website. Perfect. That, yeah, that laid it out. That makes sense. So the little copyright symbol at the bottom, um, can you go into that? Like a lot of times it has a year next to it. Do I every year go in and just change the year? What does that do for me? Yeah, this is a huge misnomer in our industry. I'm not sure why or when this happened, but people have updating their copyrights to the most recent year, but you want your copyright of your website backdated to the year it was published, because that is the starting point of probably miscellaneous text on your website in imagery. That is the first date. So it needs the copyright symbol with that very first year. It's, it's not like a whole date, to be clear. It's usually like if you published in 2017, you'd have 2017. And then you can always put a dash and put through 2022 since, you know, we're recording this in 2022 next year, you'd update that, but you don't have to, because if the year that it was published is in 2017, then all of the following years are also just derivative works of that year it was published. If you do something substantial, derivative means, you know, like kind of a change from the original work of authorship, which is your website, your design, your copy, your imagery, everything on there. Then if you do like a substantial overhaul, then I would make sure that you put like a comma or a dash with that new year as well. Okay, perfect. Great. So obviously Paige went through like the terms and conditions and the privacy policy, and that can be really overwhelming knowing all of that what you need to put into it. So talk a little bit about how you can help them. I know you mentioned your resources, but can you mention it again really quick? Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of our most purchased products in the legal page shop because it's a bundle together. So you get a terms and conditions template contract document and you get a privacy policy contract document. We highlight information that you will put in your business information in there and personal information, as well as we have memos on the side of the documents really walking you through how to use them. It's a super simple process. You open it up in like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, put in your information and copy and paste it, boom, put them on their own page at the bottom and then link them at the bottom footer of your website. So we, Rebecca and I will make sure that we link those below in this video. And then we also, you guys, we have tons of other contract templates as well. So if you have any questions related to what specific documents you may need for your unique business, just feel free to reach out to us. Me and my team are always here to help and direct you and point you in the right direction. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on and chatting all these things. And I will be linking everything below for you guys. Again, join her Facebook group if you have specific questions about legal stuff that deals with your business. And I'll link that below too. So thanks for coming on, Paige. Yeah, thanks for having me.